Hi, I'm John Joanna, and welcome to Ridgeway Butchery. Hi, um, it's John Joanna again from Ridgeway Butchery. This is our second video on our YouTube channel. I'd like to introduce you to the founders of Ridgeway Butchery, my father and my mother. My father, Harry, started it in 1964, and a few years later, when my mother married my father, she joined him in the butchery. As it is Mother's Day, I'd just like to say that they've guided me through this process. I've been involved for the past 30 years, and I'd never be where I am without their guidance. Um, they have taken a little bit of a backseat now, and I'm running more and more of the butchery, but it would never have been possible without them in the initial years. Hello. We got married in 1966, and I've been in the shop since then. Thank God I had my three children, all healthy, very successful. I've got eight grandchildren also, very proud of them, and I am very happy. I enjoyed every minute of my work, and I hope and I wish John many, many more happy and prosperous years. Thank you. What I want to say, without my wife, really, and the support of her, I, I couldn't carry on the business just for myself. But John and afterwards, yeah. as well, John joined us. Then John, he was the one actually to be here and support the business Richway Butchery. And without John, we wouldn't manage to be here up to now. We would have never been anyway. Thank you. Today we're going to process the four quarter of beef. Um, as you see once again, as I said in my last video, it's all A2. I've been using the same supply for, for, for many, many years. I would never say that South African beef is the best because that's a bit arrogant, but it's right up there. You can see this piece of meat is absolutely beautiful. It's a big piece of meat. And um, I've watched YouTube videos on cutting a four quarter piece of meat and they're very different all over the world. The way a butcher cuts his four quarter of meat depends on the demographics of the area. And in South Africa, we cut it completely different to how they would do it in the States. In South Africa, people love their bras and they love their stews. So today we're going to process it exactly like we do at Ridgeway Butchery. I am going to leave a small piece of meat, which I don't do, I don't process it in the butchery ever like that. But my cousin ordered this piece of meat the other day and it's one of my favorite pieces of meat. Meat, so I'm going to do that little part differently. First thing we're going to do with the four quarter is take out the bolo steak. As we said earlier, the four quarter is mainly stews. This is a lovely piece. We're going to cut it into cubes for, cubes, uh, for, for stews. And we're going to take and start with the bolo steak. We're going to cut off the shin. The shin we use it, we can use it for stew and shoot meats. Meat will always tell you where to cut it. There's always joints. If you find the joint, you just cut through the joint and the meat comes off easily. Once we've taken off the shin and the bolo, we basically got the chuck. We have a look, we've got the chuck, we've got the neck, the short ribs and the brisket. So what we're going to do now is just separate the short rib and the brisket from the chuck and the neck. Basically split the four quarter in half. For that we're going to need the handsaw and we're just going to cut down the bone. Now we're just going to cut the chuck off, we're going to grab it like this, make sure it doesn't fall on the floor, cut straight through the meat. So what we've just done is we've separated the four quarter into two parts. Um, this is the brisket and the short rib and on that part we kept the neck and the chuck. 
slice of bola steak, what we do with the bola is we cut it into cubes for more stews. It makes a very nice stew. We trim a little bit off, a little bit of the fat. We will process this later, as you will see. Once we've cut most of the fat off, we're just going to cube it and put it into the trays and display it for sale. It's very important in my butchery that my guys are consistent. I always tell my staff, I'd rather a customer comes four times and out of four times gets good meat, rather than coming four times and two times he gets excellent meat and two times he doesn't get good meat. It's all about the consistency and that's why we cut the four-quarter like this to get that consistency. I like to cut my chuck a different way to a lot of butchers because it ensures every piece of meat that the customer gets, every piece of chuck that he buys has got a nice piece of meat on it. All the pieces we're going to keep them separately because that will mix it into the stew eventually. We've got a nice square cut piece of chuck which we're going to slice for the trays. As you can see, every slice got a piece of meat and a piece of bone. If we had to slice a chuck differently, we could have been giving a customer all meat and no bone or no, or no bone and all meat. What's very important for me at Ridgeway Butchery is um, there needs to be as little waste as possible. I want the customer to get value for money and also it's meat. It's very important to me to have no waste. The next piece of meat we're going to cut is the short rib. Um, yeah, Ridgeway, I like to take the top head of the brisket off and I'll tell you why. The only time I would keep the head of the brisket on is if I had to debone the brisket. But we hardly ever debone the brisket. So I'm gonna cut it through here and the short rib of all the meat on the forequarter is the most popular in my shop. So I try squeeze short rib from everywhere. You'll see that I cut it out from the bottom of the chuck to save some short rib because it is the one piece of meat that's very popular in the butchery. Now we have two short ribs. We're gonna cut them differently and display them in the trays in a different way. A very, very popular cut is the blocked short rib. This is really from the chuck, but we can use it as a short rib. Proper short rib we're gonna to get to now. Because it's so popular, I try to keep that piece from the chuck in the short rib. We cut in between the bones. Very, very popular. Cut this. As you get to the top of the short rib, it does become more fatty. So we've got to try to cut away a little bit of that fat. And we move over to the bandsaw. As the name says, block short ribs. Cut it through. Very popular for stews and for curries. So we've used half of this big tray because as I said, it's, it's a very popular cut of meat. And the other half, we're gonna cut the same piece of meat a different way. 
We cut it in a different way because a lot of people like to throw this on the bra or the barbecue as they say overseas. So that you can't put onto a bra, you can't put onto a barbecue. A popular cut for the bra is the short rib. It needs to be cut lengthwise and thin. So that's what we're going to do with that. We're going to put it next to the cube so that you can compare. It's the same piece of meat, just cut differently. The short rib, as I said earlier, does become fattier as you go higher up. So we've got to be careful of the fat content. Next piece of meat is the shin. The shin is basically used in soup meat and stews. This piece of meat is very seasonal. Um, in summer, it gets deboned, it gets made into a mince, a horse, a sausage. In winter, very popular for soup meat. So we're just gonna cut through. It's basically the arm of the cow. Next piece of meat is the brisket. Very, very popular overseas in the States, in North America. I've always seen it on TV, on YouTube. What they do with the brisket is they debone it, they smoke it, they marinate it, they pre cook it. In South Africa, again, we love our bras, we love our stews, we just take a whole brisket and we slice it into brisket. All the pieces that are sliced off goes into a beef stew. A very, very popular cut in South Africa. I like to put the neck in, the whole neck into the beef stew and mix it with the pieces. The, ne the neck, I like to put it in because it's very meaty. So let's cut this in and you'll see once we've cut it, what a nice tray this makes. Once again, the neck does get a little bit fatty as you go up, turn that fat off. We'll process it later. And I like to remove a little bit of the bone, the neck bone. A little bit of meat there, let's take it off. We'll take that neck bone out so that the customer gets more meat than bone. All the pieces that we have here, there's very little that you can do with it. It's generally off cuts and what off cuts, what happens to off cuts in a butchery gets processed into burros and mints. Earlier I told you about the brisket head and why I like to cut it off. This piece of meat, once you debone it, I don't know if this makes sense, but it's a really, really sweet piece of meat. It has that good mix of fat, of body fat. This fat is different to the kidney fat, this is body fat. Body fat becomes very juicy if you throw it into a burros. That's a beautiful piece of meat to get processed into a sausage. So we throw that in there, we'll process it into a burros. And this is the fat that doesn't dry out, it's like the kidney fat. And we'll carry on deboning all the rest so we can make a nice burros and a mince. Very careful when we debone that we get all the bones out. Last thing you want is throwing a bone into your mincer and it goes into your sausage. It gets shattered into a million pieces and every piece 
of sausage or mince will have a piece of bone in. So very important that we take all the bones out. Basically almost finished processing the forequarter. Those are the off cuts I've just deboned. You can see from that whole piece of meat we're going to have a little bit of fat which we will process and a little bit of bones. <coughs> These bones we're going to use them and we're going to sell them as soup bones. The last piece of meat that I left is the one I say that I never really cut it like this in the shop but it is such a nice piece of meat it doesn't do it justice to just slice it through. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a ribeye out of this, a ribeye on the bone. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to separate the top parts. As I said, meat will always tell you where to cut. Lots of different uses we can cut that into boneless chuck if you want and we can pre-pack it into boneless chuck I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put a tray of boneless chuck I'm not one for roast, I've never been a fan of roast, but this roast is different. This is a ribeye roast, I'm just going to take that off, and it's starting to take shape. Beautiful, beautiful piece of meat, the ribeye. Like all meat, it needs to be matured to be even nicer. This is a very fresh piece. Just gonna in between the bone there. Clean that bone a little bit. I don't often do this, so if you look a little bit clumsy. Sorry, we don't do this at Rejoy Butchu, but it is one of my favorite pieces of meat. So, all of that excess meat off. Bone sticking out. And then, we're going to cut it in here. Just like that. Take that piece of meat there. Here's your ribeye on the bone. If you want it on the bone, roast it like that, that's a beautiful piece of meat. What we can also do is ribeye steaks on the bone. All we do is we cut straight through like 
Left. And there's your ribeye on the bone. Another beautiful piece of meat. As you can see, we've taken that whole forequarter, we've processed it, we'll show you the trays later. And from that whole forequarter, this is the secret. We've got very little fat if there's a kilo of fat here. It's also very important where you buy from. I've been buying from the same supplier for many, many years, and um, his stuff is superb and it's lean. And then we have the bones here. These are the bones that are left. We will cut them tomorrow in the shop, sell them as meaty bones. And the whole forequarter has been processed with no waste. Finally, we're left with all the offcuts, which I have deboned. Uh, we're going to process this into mince and burrowbors, but I think there'll be another episode. But what's important about this is what I told you earlier. I don't like to put any kidney fat into my burrowbors. It dries out the burrowbors. When I do put a bit of fat, it's body fat. Body fat, once it cooks, it melts into the meat and it becomes very, very juicy. That brisket head into the burrowbors is my favorite part. That has to go into the burrowbors.